Hey guys, my name is Mannequin and welcome to Mastering EDM with FL Studio. So, uh, welcome to the series. This is going to be a series from basically uh, starting from scratch, assuming you know nothing about FL Studio, all the way up to more advanced techniques and things that some producers may never share, but they use in all of their famous productions and songs. So, uh, it's going to be a very co comprehensive series where I'm going to talk about some of the basics, some of the advanced, and I'm not going to really assume that you know um, anything, and I'm just going to tr try to give you you everything you need to know so some of this stuff may be uh, stuff you already learned uh, or stuff that you've heard before uh, so you might want to jump over the first couple of videos if you're one of those people but if you're entirely new to audio production uh, mixing or anything like that then uh, you'll want to stick around for the whole series because it's gonna be perfect for you so today we're gonna be talking about the uh, the pattern window and um, I'm not gonna get into that quite yet because first I wanna just kinda say what the whole deal is here. So um, so this is software that we use to make songs and uh, this is actually one of the ones that is more used for EDM. Uh, there are a whole bunch of different options out there and for those of you that don't yet know, these are called digital audio workstations, often shortened to DAWs or as I like to call them, DAWs. And um, what these are is basically um, they're, they're, it's software uh, and groups of software that collectively you could use to edit audio. That's essentially what they all are, and uh, each one just does it in its own way. FL Studio has a unique way that makes it really easy to make quick things, um, but the other tools are just as powerful, and really it's just a matter of which one do you like best in terms of workflow. So, uh, without further ado, let's get into the video. Um, so this first video is going to be just kind of giving you an idea of how to make a pattern and uh, we'll talk about how these connect later, but uh, for now I just kind of want to give you this bit of information. So uh, if, you, if you're seeing something different from what uh, you're seeing on this screen right now, whenever you open uh, FL Studio, go to View and then Arrange Windows, Desktop Default, and then what it should do is it should set all of your windows so they look like this. Most of you, I believe, should be actually seeing the same thing as this. Uh, if it doesn't do this, then my apologies. Uh, you should be able to find uh, all these windows already open. Um, I might have changed my default view, but I doubt it. Um, so, uh, so if you're seeing something different, please let me know. And uh, if going to that view, arrange windows, and desktop doesn't work, then, uh, then please just let me know and I'll see if I can figure out what's going on. But uh, I may not be able to help you in all cases, so my suggestion is uh, ask Image Line support and they will be glad to help you out. So, uh, or there's also forums there on Image Line you might want to check out as well because they could probably help you out as well. So, uh, anyway, without further ado, let's get into it. So, this is our pattern window. It's actually called the channel rack, you'll see here, but this is where we get to uh, start laying out all our patterns. And um, it'll make a lot more sense in a second here, and you'll actually get to see um, uh, how things start start to play out in terms of uh, graphically and how it starts to look. But uh, for now, we'll just kind of narrow it down this way. So we have a huge grid here. How do you know what to choose? Well, each row here is a particular instrument, and right now all we have is drums and drum samples. So uh, I'll, I'll just kind of preview all these here. Um, I'm going to pop open a window here and don't be daunted by everything that's in it. Yes, it is all useful stuff, but we're not going to talk about it. So uh, I clicked on this to pop up the window here and we have this waveform it's called. And this is actually, if you were to draw out the audio, that's what this would look like. But uh, this is what it sounds like. I'm clicking on it there just to get a little sample and it plays back the audio clip and you kind of hear that. So uh, we have the kick, the clap, the hat, and the snare. And all these have their own unique sound. So. Once again, makes sense. And um, so what we could do with these is we could actually key, start to key things in. So you'll notice that uh, each row here, uh, we have a whole bunch of options where to drop stuff. And what I'm doing here is I'm actually just holding the left click button to key things in. But you'll notice now that I've done that, um, I can click, but it's actually not going to do anything now. Um, and that's because the way FL Studio works in whenever you're drawing in loops, notes, patterns, anything. Um, you left click to draw something in and you right click to remove it. So how does this work? Uh, we're in pattern mode, which you'll uh, you'll learn later what that is when we switch over and start to talk about the playlist. But for now, don't worry too much about that. For now, we're going to focus on just pattern mode. And uh, you got to make sure you are in pattern mode. If you're clicking around and you might have switched off it somehow, make sure this thing is lit up. So uh, make sure it's nice and uh, orangish yellow there so we could uh, be playing back in pattern mode. So now I'm going to click the play button. And you'll see this little gray bar starts to move across. And you'll also see this playhead moving. That's the 
two of the three things that are happening here. The third thing is right here. Uh, so you kind of see that uh, some things are changing, but it's not actually making any sound. That's because we haven't keyed anything in yet. So the way this works is uh, we have ding, 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 ding. I could just key in a couple notes here. Uh, uh, actually, you know what? We'll do some kind of like this, just because, just kind of show you guys uh, what the sort of sound is. So, so we have it plays it back, and you'll notice the if you watch the little uh, gray bar at the bottom again, it just moves along at the same speed. And whenever it hits something that is lit up, it plays it back. So that's kind of how we know where to put these various things. If we want it to be spaced out, then we just space them all out. If we want it to be faster, then we just put them closer together. So we'll just add a couple more in between so that there's uh, less gaps. And then finally, we'll light up all of them and you'll see. Uh, and we could just kind of move some of them out. Uh, do that and that and then we'll do I don't know that so uh, you kind of see that things are happening there and it's playing these back just you know however we lay them out so we could change things around and uh, get different sounds. So if you're trying to key things in to make it sound good and it's not sounding good, don't be frustrated. It takes a little bit of practice. And uh, my suggestion is listen to your favorite songs and you kind of get an idea of what they're doing. And um, if you kind of listen, uh, just line it up. Usually the kick drum is laid out like this. And then you can find the different sounds and kind of try to figure out where they're played and then put them with, uh, with respect to those ones. So just kind of listen to it and then say, okay, so there's a, there's a kick drum here. And then there's a snare on top of the kick drum, but only not all of them, just like every other one. So we'll put, instead of putting a snare right here, we'll put a snare right here, and then we'll skip one and then put a snare here, and it'll sound like this. And then if I listen uh, closely, maybe there'll be a hi-hat and it'll kind of sound like this. Uh, most of the hi-hats can go like this actually. And, or maybe they sound like this, which is the, one of the other common patterns. So that's kind of the idea we have here for creating loops. So you'll see, uh, as we start to key things in, all we have to do is just look at the various tracks, get used to the sounds inside of them and, um, and then put them wherever we want them. So obviously here, um, these are not the only ones we're limited to. I'm just gonna show you so you could have a little bit of flexibility uh, how you could actually change some of these sounds. But uh, what we'll do here is we'll uh, add one more just so you could know how to have more. And then what we're gonna do is we're going to go to, uh, if you look, there's little categories here. We have controller, drum, MIDI, miscellaneous, patcher, sampler. So we're gonna go sampler and then click direct wave. And it's gonna load there. Nope, that was the wrong one. Uh, apologies there. Uh, let's actually change this. Uh, that's actually a good example here because now I can show you how to change things. If we uh, right click this, we'll get a menu and we can hit replace. And uh, what I wanted to do is sampler, sorry. Sampler was what I wanted, exactly. Uh, and then what we could do here is click this and you'll notice there's no audio file here. Like when we pop these ones open, these have an audio file. This one doesn't, so we're adding a new one. There's no audio file we could click, so we go to file here and then click the little folder button and then will be dropped right here. Um, actually, I think uh, this is kind of where it puts you if you uh, if you don't have anything in there, but if you have something in there before, then it'll show you um, just for uh, comparison's sake. We have this one here, and if I hit open, it'll drop me inside the folder with some samples already. So we can actually see what this is. Program files, image line, FL Studio, data, patches, packs, legacy, drum, dance. So uh, we'll go to patches, packs, legacy, drum, and dance. So we'll do that. So we'll pop open this one again, go to file, and oops, it actually put us there uh, in the right spot anyway. Okay, cool. So now we have uh, now we have some other samples we could choose from. We'll just choose, uh, I don't know, a ride. There we go. That's good. So now we have this ride sound, and we can put it on top of these as well. So we'll just go like this.
once again, I do know how to key in stuff because I've been doing this for so long, so I kind of can plug stuff in without having to actually uh, tweak stuff around too much. But uh, if you're not used to it, then uh, you, you may have to shuffle things around a little bit and see, oh, is that enough of a space? Should I put more of a space? Should I should move it around a little bit? And uh, you kind of get a better idea where to place things. So, um, so that's kind of an idea of how to work with these. And I'm going to show you one quick uh, trick before we take off here. And that's uh, these right here. If you see these little knobs, if you look in the uh, tooltip window here, you can see it says channel volume. So we're going to actually use these really quick to... Uh, to just turn on the volume of some of these to make it fit a little bit better. So we can just kind of adjust the volume of the various spots here and we don't need to worry too much about um, you know dealing with these yet. And I'll talk about actually how you know what to change these to later. Um, but uh, but that's that's a lot further down the road. Um, right now we're just trying to get acquainted with this interface. So I'm gonna leave you guys to uh, to think about this a little bit. Like I said, just kind of basic review. We have this playback, and it plays whatever whatever is on that gray bar that goes across here. So uh, so just kind of get used to keying these things in. And once again, if you want to be uh, dangerous, then you could pop open some of these and change what the sample is. Just go through some of the examples. There's a kick there. Ooh, that's a weird kick. Um, and then you could go up a folder, and then there's some other ones. Um, so you kind of get some much different sounds. And you could use those. Um, and additionally, once again, how to add something is you go to this Add button here and go to Sampler right there. And uh, once again, if you do accidentally choose the wrong thing, you could right-click it and then either delete it and try to add it again, or you could hit Replace and then just go to Sampler again. Uh, so, and then you could, once again, you just load up files, however you want it to be. Just choose whichever one you want. You might want to go, I don't know, choose a hip hop, uh, hip hop kick. There we go. There we go. That's more like a hip hop kick. So we choose that one and then we'll replace it. So instead of, uh, instead of the regular kick, we'll use this hip hop kick. So I'll add this kick in where it should go and then erase these. Sweet. But that can't be it. Unfortunately, I have to wrap up the video here just because I do want to keep these videos shorter and not go too long because I know it kind of distresses people when videos get way too long. So uh, I'm trying to actually learn how to cut down on my video sizes. So in an effort to do that, we're going to wrap up this video here. But uh, just keep in mind, this is a very, 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 very small portion of what you could do in FL Studio. And uh, this is actually just learning how to do loops. And if you are curious and how to save your loop, um, then you, you know, right now we'll just save it as a FL project, but I'll show you uh, later how we could actually save it as an MP3 file. So you could actually uh, give it to your friends and show them the, the beats that you made. So uh, thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this, please actually leave a like to let me know because I am trying to figure out how many people want me to continue this series and if a lot of people are interested in this. So uh, if you guys like this tutorial and you would like uh, more tutorials in this style that cover the entirety of uh, FL Studio, please uh, leave a like or a comment to let me know so I know. Um, otherwise, I'll probably just uh, focus more on my logic tutorials because I know a lot of people like those and a lot of people are more used to me doing those. So uh, this is actually a series where if you guys like it, please do leave a like so I know and you could uh, actually see more of these. Otherwise, this will probably only be uh, around 10 episodes long and then I'll drop it off and just kind of reference to my logic series and say most of the stuff is transferable and you could actually learn the stuff in logic and use it here. Uh, but if there's a lot of people that want me to continue these tutorials, then I will and, um, and I'll help out all you guys in learning uh, basically everything that you need to know from, uh, from knowing nothing about audio to all the way to the end, knowing how to make a track, make, knowing how to make a good track, and, uh, and everything like that. So anyway, thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.